Hey, thanks so much for checking out my video. I really do appreciate it a lot, and I hope you get a lot out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do here today is work through some open chords and strum patterns. For some of you, this may be very simple, or in some others, it may be, you know, a challenge. If you're just starting out, some of these could be tricky, but, you know, with all any of these, with a little bit of practice, you, you will get them. I guarantee you will. Uh, what this is aimed at is more of a lesson feel, like a real lesson, something I would do with a student if they came in, I would work through something like this with them. And so that's kind of the feel I want you to get with this. So this is not a quick lesson. If you, you know, if that's something you're looking for, that's not going to be this one. I do have other lessons that are shorter and things like that, you know, so you can check those out on my YouTube site. Okay, let's get into it here. So the first chord progression, I have my Guitar Pro app up. And so the first progression here is going to be G, E minor, C, D. So some of you may know these, some of you may not. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I'm going to go through each chord and kind of explain movements through each one, which I think is really important. A lot of people struggle with their basic open chord strumming. So we're going to learn to read rhythms, some sheet music here. Uh, we have four bars of music with a repeat sign, so that means we play this thing twice, play through these four chords twice, so it's a chord progression. And we have what this means is down strum, up strum. When you have a down strum in parentheses, it's a ghost strum. So that means that we would actually miss, miss the strings, right, when we do that. Um, and we count this, we have a quarter note, eighth notes, and then a quarter note. We're in four, four time, Every bar needs to add up the four beats, so we got one, two, and three, and four. But now the and of two is tied into beat three, so now that means that you don't. That's why we have the ghost strum here, because these notes from the and of two ring out into beat three. So that's why we would miss on this one on a down strum. And I will show you that here in a second. Uh, anything else that I have to? I have the. We're going to play along with the click track when we do this. So we'll get a four beat count in when we go and do this. So you'll hear the click track four times and then I'll start playing. And you'll see the music scroll by as we do it. So I'm hoping to get you to be able to do this with me. You may not be able to do it right away, but again, with practice, you should be able to do it. And I believe I'll have this on, on Sound Slice, um, if I can, which means you could see it played along there too, but this should be good um, through this too. If it's on YouTube, you can slow it down, right? Okay, so here we go. So, G chord. I'm going to bring the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing. I think it's more important that you see this than my face. So, I'm going to try to do the best I can here to, you know, to get angles. So maybe it's a little awkward. I can rotate the table and things like that. All right, so... A G chord. If you don't know it, we want to put our middle finger on the, on the third fret of the low E. And we want to put our first finger on the second fret of the A string. These fingers are curled. I'm shooting for the front of the frets. The D and the G string are open. Then we put our ring and our pinky, and ring and pinky on the third fret of the, of the B and the E string. And again, I'm trying to go as close as I can to the front of the frets. So we don't want to be back here, right? I want to be back here. We don't want to be back here. We want to be up front of the frets, right? And then um, keep your fingers curled. And what you can do is you can just pick. You know, you can just pick through each. Just pick through each string. And just make sure you're. string the ring up. Do the best you can. I mean, if you're a complete beginner watching this right now, you just do the best you can. Honestly, it's more important about how you're doing this than if you're getting all the strings the ring out, because sometimes it just doesn't happen. So I'd much rather have you be focused on how you're sitting, you know. And it's hard to tell here, but I'm sitting, you know, I'm not hunched, I'm not hunched over, things like that. Like I'm sitting, I've got the guitar in a position here that's 
it's out in front of me. It's not straight across my body like this. It's out in front of me. Let's lean back a little bit. I can see what I'm doing. My right arm is balancing it. I'm very relaxed when I play. All right. So again, just do the best you can. So we go to E minor. Well, here, this is nice. Because on E minor, we have an anchor finger. So what that means is that from the G, my first finger is already where it needs to be to go to E minor. So I'm just going to bring the middle finger underneath. So here's your index finger on the G chord, right? Your middle finger is right here. So the middle finger is right here. So we're going to just bring it underneath. And then we get rid of the third and the fourth finger. So we're just moving like that. I slide the index back just a touch just to get, you know, the middle finger in there. Once again, from the from the uh, low E string down, and I just change my string so I know I'm going to be going out of tune here a little bit. So I'm going to be checking in. So I really want you guys to hear the, the correct in tune pitches. And if we're playing together, we both should be in tune. So here it is again. That one you should have a problem with. But make sure you're leaving some clearance here. And you know, and here we want you know, we want some space, right? See that? You see how I have space in here? Right? I'm not doing this. I'm not like doing this and I'm not doing this I'm just in a normal relaxed position here with my wrist and I've got space you get flat you start muting things out so E minor now and then we're gonna go to C well another chord here that we have an anchor finger so your middle finger from the E minor right here, it doesn't need to move. We're going to keep it right there for C. But then, now I'm still going to, though, think about moving my ring finger down first here on the third fret of the A string. And then I bring my first finger in to play here on the first fret of the B string. So you can see that move here. I'm just like keeping my middle finger down the ring finger and then the index finger. Now, ultimately, your, your goal is to move every finger at the same time directly where it needs to go. Quickest way to any point is a straight line. So my fingers are going to boom, just move right where they need to go. But when you're starting out, that doesn't happen like that. So, but you're better off than thinking of getting your ring finger down first and then your first finger. Once again, I'm just going to strum through those, or pick through those, just to make sure that everything is ringing out. You know, I'm doing the best I can here with my thumb. Just kind of keep it, you know, right on the back. Right? Darn it, this is hard. So I'm trying to keep it right on the back here. Like that. See that there? So I'm not putting it way underneath, you know, pu pushing my wrist out. Or I'm not, I don't have it way over the top or something like this where I bring my wrist up. Anytime your wrist and elbow come up, you get flat, right? So it should just be how you kind of, how your arm is at naturally at rest should be, your wrist should be, how your wrist is at rest here, very slight curvature in it, should just kind of remain that way when you bring it into play here. All right, last chord for this first progression is D. And we have no anchor fingers here. So when we have a situation like this, it becomes really important that we just don't aimlessly start putting fingers down. We really want to think here first about what is the best finger to move first. 
Normally I wouldn't say the first finger is, but in this case, it does make sense to move the first finger to right here first. And the reason that is is because these two fingers here have to come down. So I'd rather bring my index finger up and hopefully it pushes these two fingers. Let me get rid of this. It pushes these two fingers down. Right? And I'm still going for the front of the frets here. So that's going to be the first finger going to the second fret of the G string, and your ring finger stopping at the third fret of the B string, and then your middle fingers in between on the uh, first, second fret of the high E string. So again, it's index, ring, middle. Index, ring, middle. And we're trying to shoot for the front of the frets. And that's going to be from the D string down. And then when we go back to G, the first chord, you can see, you know, it repeats back to G. Well, the ring finger here from D does not need to move. We have another anchor finger. So we just keep that anchor, that ring finger down. If we can, sometimes it's not easy when you're first starting. And then we're going to move the middle finger up to the th third fret of the low E. So it's right here right now. We want to bring it up to here. And then hopefully the index finger comes along with the ride because that needs to go here for the second fret of the A string. Then your pinky goes down underneath. So let's see that. So I go, my middle finger's coming up, the index coming with it, right? And then I had my pinky come underneath. So it's the first chord we did. G. Now we're going to play along. Well, actually, I got to show you the strum pattern first. So, the strum pattern here is going to be down. So it's one, one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. Because I'm, go I'm not counting three because we're ghosting that. One, two, and, and four. And it'll be down, down, up up, down. So here's how, what it looks like. I'll count it and then I'll say the down, up strum. So one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. Or you say down, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down. And something to take note of here. When I'm strumming, I may hit all the strings on the way down, but I'm only going to hit the first few on the way up come away from the strings. Okay, so that's going to be the strum pattern through the whole, this whole first progression here for each chord. So you're going to notice that some of these are going to be a little bit more difficult changing than others. Like C to D will probably be a challenge for some of you if you're just a beginner starting out. But the G to E minor should be pretty simple because the first finger again is already down and the middle finger, right? I'm, I'm saying this again because of just now we're, we're, we're putting in a strum pattern, right? So, you know, and I do have to make a, I'm gonna make a simpler strumming chord video for like complete beginners because there you know we would probably be working in chord pairs just doing G to E minor and then working E minor to C and then you know C to D on its own and you can still do that but I guess then I would say that this lesson is a little bit more for people that have a little bit of experience with open chords and, and strumming right and maybe for some of you you've just never even played in time or anything like that so by playing with me you're going to be strumming these patterns in time with the metronome. So okay, so let's try and do this. We're going to do the first pat, um, strum pattern here. Remember you're applying this strum pattern to each chord. my thumb a little bit more, especially when I play D. I may wrap it around a little bit more, you know? 
that's a little bit different. Sometimes on acoustic, I do a little bit more than I do on an electric. But overall, I'm really just trying to keep my thumb in that same position the best I can. Okay. So again, I may move it a little bit. And, you know, you can too. It's just good to have a good understanding of where, you know, a good a good place for it to be for the most part, most of the time it is. Here we go. So we're going to get a four beat count in. And we're going to play through it two times. I'm going to turn the volume up just a little bit more. Here we go. One, two, three, four. If you need to go back and play through that again with me a few times, go ahead. Remember, if you're on YouTube, you can slow this down. So I have it set, like I said, at 80 beats per minute. I mean, you can find your own drum beat at home too and do this. Uh, so let me just quickly say, I think this is important, is that the, the most important thing here, I don't think I said this actually, um, so the most important thing here is the constant right hand motion with your strumming. So I'm in a constant eighth note pattern here. My right hand, even that's why we're ghosting, because we don't want to be like doing that. Yes, it still sounds the same for the most part. But you've stopped your strumming and that gets you out of time and that gets you to so if we go right, that's that like sounds like it, you know. But I'm stopping on this first quarter note. Which means the next drum that should be a down strum becomes a you know your up strum, so it would sound like. You know that's what we don't want. We don't want that to sound like that. So the and to not sound like that means that you have to keep the right hand in a constant uh, up and down motion, just like a pendulum. I'm not rushing the eighth notes, right? Everything's this the same down, the same up, the same down. Now, like I said, I don't always hit all the strum strings on the way up, but I still come away from the strings, right? So I, I may miss, see how I kind of come away? So I don't, I don't hit them all. I come up for the first few, and then I come away. But I'm still maintaining this. You can see how my, my motion is like throwing a frisbee down at the ground. It's, um, it's a combination of arm, elbow, and then at the very last second there, just like you throw a frisbee, the wrist takes over. You just got to imagine that you're doing it down to the ground. So you can hear I'm just hitting. So anytime we break up the string. Anytime we break up the strings, things are going to be sound more musical, right? And if you want, there's another little thing you can do. You can you can play through this progression. I'm just picking. I'm just I'm not really thinking about what I'm picking. I'm just just picking, but I'm in time. That's the important thing that I'm doing too. All right, let's. I'll keep talking about the right hand strumming here as we go. I don't know if I'm going to get through all these here. That's okay, you know. It's all, there's a lot of stuff going on here, especially if you're, you know, in the beginner phase of playing. All right, the next progression here. Well, we already know two of the chords, and we already kind of know the strum pattern. All right. This play, so you know your C, the one we did here. So third finger, middle finger, and next finger. A minor. Well, you know, we have two anchor fingers here. The middle finger and the first finger here and here just need to stay. So that means your ring finger just needs to shoot underneath. It's right here right now. It just needs to come underneath. 
So we just go like this, right? We take it. We're going to make a little room with the middle finger to get it on there, you know? But that's it. All right? And again, we pick from the A string down, because that is the root of the chord. circles when you hear, you know, like this, the strings are to be played open. Those fingers curled. Keep that thumb in a good position. F. Oh, this is for a lot of you out there. This is, you know, your least favorite chord. I know that. It is for a lot of people until until eventually you just kind of get it. So this is the you know half bar version for the most part. And you know I don't really have an you do have an anchor finger, so your middle finger really doesn't need to move, but you're gonna drop it down here to bar both of these first fret of the B and the E string. And then my middle finger will come down to my ring finger. Well, I'm gonna push my ring finger up first here to the third fret of the D string. And my middle finger should come down from here, which is right here, come down to here. And I drop my first finger down to capture both the B and the E string of the first fret. You know, I'm kind of, I'm not straight on like this. I'm kind of at an angle on the side of my finger slightly. And then I have these two down here. So as you can see, you're trying not to play the E or the A string. So we pick from the D string down. This one you might put your thumb underneath just a little bit more, depending, you know. You just learn when you need to move the thumb for certain things, and when the thumb can just stay in one position. And then we know G, well, but we do know it, but we've never played it from F to G before. So again, you have to think about what fingers you're going to lead with first. So this is important. I would be leading with my middle finger, bringing it up to the third fret of the low E, and hopefully again the index finger just kind of comes along for a ride. They're really already in the shape they need to be in. They just need to come up. And then by bringing these two up first, you're hopefully you're pushing these two kind of out of the way and down to get down where they need to be here for G. Let's go back to F from G, I'd lead with my ring finger to the D string. I would not pull my first finger back and pull all the fingers. Lead with my ring finger. So think about that if you're practicing these two chords as a chord pair. You lead with the ring finger to go to F. You let all the other fingers go. You don't hold fingers down while you're trying to move. You let the other fingers come up, but you lead with the ring. All right, the strum pattern here. Well, it's kind of just like the first one, except look what we're doing. We're adding in the and of one, and we're tying it into beat two. So what that means is that you're going to ghost on beats two, three, two and three. So that means you have three up strums in a row. Here's what it sounds like with the C chord. So, so uh, I'll count it twice and then count out the, or say the strumming. So it's going to be one and 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 four. One and 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 four. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. Again, the right hand never stopped. One and 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 four. Constant down up motion that is the key to solid rhythm guitar like I just can't say it enough like how important rhythm is and rhythm guitar is I see so many people struggle with it yet some of these people can just play great lead stuff and improvise really well but you go to play with them you know when you improvise 
you know, somebody is going to hold down the chords while somebody improvises, and then you switch, right? And some that other person who was just playing lead takes the chords, and then you take the lead. And and sometimes I do this with students, and they just, you know, they do some crazy stuff lead-wise, and they go in the rhythm, and they just can't hold the rhythm down. And what that tells me is that they're never practicing rhythm at home. They're just always playing lead guitar, and they're probably not practicing with the metronome. And you can tell that's why I have the, the metronome on here. All right. Well, we're going to just apply that, like we did here, that strum pattern, to each of the other chords, and we repeat it two times. I'll play through it once without the, the beat, the metronome, and then we'll, we'll do it again like we did the first one. So it's going to be this. It's going to be down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down. Oh, I didn't talk about it because you had to go to, to C from G. That's really probably the most important one out of all these, in my opinion here. So when you go to G to C, please, please, please. You don't have, we don't have any anchor fingers, right? You have to think, remember, to lead with your ring finger to go to C. Many of you, many of you are going to do this. You are going to want to lead with the C to the C with the first finger, right? So you're gonna wanna bring this finger back here. You can see what that does. It pulls these other fingers with it. Then you're going to bring these two into play. So you're going to go like this, and you're going to be throwing your fingers. Right? So you're going to be throwing your fingers. Like, and you're going to throw those two. So ring, or sorry, you go index, and then you throw these two. Right? No, we don't want to do that. So what we want to do here is we want to lead the ring finger first. So I'm not going to hold these two down. I'm just going to start pushing up with the ring finger and start pushing these two down out of the way. Right? You see that? You have to remember this. You have to lead with the ring finger. But again, in time, you, that won't happen. You will just move each finger individually to each string it needs, each string that it needs, wherever it needs to go. Right? So that comes down to Finger good finger independence, strength and endurance, and then just the the um, repetition of playing these open chords. I'm lucky in a sense because I'm and I teach guitar every day, so that means that I'm doing this every day. Whereas if I didn't teach, I might not play G and C on quite a regular basis. I'd be doing other things. Uh, So yeah, so just you have to think about leading with the ring finger. Okay, here we go. Find a good position here with my guitar. Once again, four beat count in, and then we do the strum pattern. Here we go. One, two, three, four. on me. Let's do it again. Here we go. Three, four, and, and four, one, and, 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 So, I think that I will leave, I'll do, I'll just slowly work my way through these other strum patterns. I'm sure for a lot of you that's, you know, you have a lot to work on there with just those two patterns, right? So as just a quick recap, the things you want to think about, let me see here. So as a quick recap, the things we want to think about are going to be 
having recognizing whether you have an anchor finger, the finger down or not. G D minor, your, your first finger's down on the A string already, so there's no reason to lift it. You might move it a little bit. So being aware of anchor fingers and keeping your wrist and your thumb in a good position. We don't want to be up too far. Now again, let me just show you. You don't want to be. I feel like if I don't show it to you guys, I won't get it. You know. So we don't want to be up too far like this, and we don't want to be like that either. Okay. And the right hand. So the right hand. We talked about keeping that constant, keeping that constant motion. We don't want to be choppy and stoppy. We want to learn to keep a uh, constant right hand motion going. All right, I think I will end it there. So thank you. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. I'm available for lessons either online um, or in person. Thanks so much.